Well, good afternoon. It's wonderful to see a room that's so packed, it's standing room only. And uh, also the fact that we've put on, especially for yourselves today, um, the glorious Scottish sunshine. And uh, I'm sure there will be many observations about how beautiful our uh, surroundings are. I am uh, biased because my constituency is immediately north of this. And this is just the trailer to the real thing. And I would heartily recommend you all uh, take the road north to see even more, uh, even more glories. But it is fitting, I feel, to be having this conversation, eh, to be taking, as it were, the COP conversations out of the heart of Glasgow and into an environment eh, like this. It is a fitting setting, I think, for an event on discussions on financing the nature eh, recovery. And a, a warm welcome to, uh, to those that are joining us uh, online. I too am glad not to be wearing my trackies, which I think I did wear on a far more regular basis than you let on. So um, it, it's great to be uh, slightly more uh, dressed up. I have three uh, points, uh, three uh, relatively brief points. The first is on the objective, the second is on the risk, and the third is on the opportunity. And as you can understand, I'm more keen to get onto the opportunity than to dwell on uh, the risk. But I think we need to confront that as well. And in terms of the objective, I think we're now at a stage where we all know quite clearly what the objectives are, especially over uh, these uh, two weeks. Um, we're now approaching the end of the first week of uh, COP26. And this is the world's best chance to limit global warming to 1.5 degrees. But in this fight to keep Paris alive, nature does play and must play a critical role. Nature is climate, climate is nature, and that is precisely why we are here today. And it can contribute to more than 30% of our net zero targets here in Scotland alone. To take one small example, this morning I was speaking at the Peatland uh, Pavilion, uh, about a quarter of uh, the Scottish mainland is peatlands. Now, you won't see that on our branding, 25% of Scotland is a bog, but it does play a key role when it comes to uh, meeting our climate change uh, ambitions. And over the next uh, two days here at uh, Ross Priory, our focus is on how we shift the dial. We know what the objectives are, how do we now take the meaningful, tangible action that is required to shift the dial? And as the person who's responsible for balancing the Scottish government's budget, I am all too acutely aware that public funding, public finance can only go so far. If I take Scotland, we know that the Committee on Climate Change has been clear that 85% of the finance required to meet net zero must come from the private sector. So I think this is a hugely important conversation. So, Taking me on to the, the, the main substance, which is, is the risk, confronting the risk, but recognising where the risk breeds and creates opportunity. The scale of, of the nat nature crisis uh, globally is, is devastating. Uh, I think we, we probably all know that. The world has lost half of its forests and coral reefs and 70% of its waste, west, uh, wetlands. And according to the World Economic Forum, over half of global GDP has a high or moderately high dependency on nature. For many people across the world, the nature crisis is causing catastrophic consequences. I had the privilege of speaking to a, a gentleman from uh, Tonga a, a few days ago. We were on a, a TV debate and he was listening to the debate, the domestic debate in Scotland about what we should do and when we might do it and should we go further while saying at home, villages are being relocated at the moment, our plans are um, in place to relocate villages. In other words, this is not a theoretical, rhetorical argument about what we might do at some point in the future. This is a very pressing issue, uh, one that we see the consequences of in our daily lives. We know that people living uh, in poverty are disproportionately exposed 
to those risks. And, and in Scotland, we recognise that those challenges do exist at home and abroad. We recognise there is a responsibility to lead by example, but also to share ideas and to share best practice with our friends and neighbours across the world. We are a proud signatory of the Edinburgh Declaration on Biodiversity ahead of COP15. Of course, more than 160 devolved regional and local governments eh, have signed the declaration calling for greater global ambition in tackling biodiversity loss. But perhaps it's controversial to say, but one of the big themes coming through, I think, eh, from those out with the COP tent is that you've signed these declarations. What are you doing about it? Whatever uh, agreements come out of COP26 and the deforestation one is a good example. The result will only matter if it delivers real tangible actions. We are taking major steps here at home to not only try and lead by example, but also to play our part in contributing to that commitment. By the end of this decade, we will have protected 30% of Scotland's land for nature, investing heavily in the restoration of peatlands and woodlands and other natural habitats, committing nearly £500 million over the course of this parliament. From a risk perspective, our extensive natural capital assets means that we have much to lose. But it also means that we are ideally placed to lead the way in adopting nature-based approaches to tackling the climate emergency. We have a long way to travel to meet the scale of our ambitions. The Green Finance Institute estimates that Scotland's nature finance gap currently stands at around between £15 billion and £27 billion for the next decade. And that clearly demonstrates the point I made at the outset, that if the Committee on Climate Change suggests that 85% of the finance required for net zero it must come from the private sector, then quite clearly on the nature-based approach, eh, the same applies, that we need to fill that gap. And that's why, eh, clearly, here today, I think we have eh, the talent, the experience, um, the representation in this room to try and find a solution to how we not only plug that gap and do the bare minimum, as it were, but how do we plug that gap and go even further. And I recognise that we absolutely need to ensure that delivering uh, that capital um, finds uh, homes uh, that are viable and deliverable at a time when countries around the world are contending with the issue. But having spoken about the two points I wanted to um, uh, spend uh, the least amount of time on, because we know uh, the challenge, that's presumably why we're here, or why you drove the, the hour from, from Glasgow. There is a huge opportunity. We've got the moral obligation to act, but the economic uh, opportunity, I think, is equally persuasive. According to UNEP, investing in nature could generate uh, $10 trillion in business value and create 395 million jobs globally. And we know in Scotland that there is a huge opportunity, huge uh, potential. And what I love about this is that often the areas that feel they've had the most to lose as a result of the crisis have the most to gain if we ensure that we do this in a fair and a just way. And just transition is never inevitable. It must be created and it must be intentionally uh, delivered. Here in, in Scotland, uh, the nature-based sector, and I see some representatives from the nature-based sector here uh, today, um, has a significant contribution to play in Scotland, amounting to 195 thousand jobs or 7.5 percent of Scotland's workforce uh, in 2019. I want to see that grow and develop. So the first session today is going to address the developing uh, task force on nature related financial disclosures. The market led UN supported international initiative obviously builds on the TCFD, its climate risk related sister framework. And that is already on a statutory footing in the UK. And these types of frameworks must highlight the resilience risk in current portfolios and business operations with the aim of redirecting global investment flows towards climate and the in the case of the TNFD nature based nature positive economic activity the efforts are hugely important in helping us establish robust assessments 
of what economic activity genuinely counts as green. You will all have seen the discussion in the press over the last uh, few days. On the one hand, huge celebration and a huge welcome for what Mark Car uh, 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 Mr Carney has been able to deliver in terms of uh, assets uh, being uh, available and set aside and allocated uh, for um, uh, green uh, funding. But you'll also have said some, seen some of the questions that if we just think we've ticked a box by ensuring that that capital is available, then we haven't done the task. I know myself as a politician that announcing uh, a measure with funding attached allows you to tick a box, sit back and quote it ad nauseum for the next few elections. The challenge is actually measuring the outcome in whether the funding that's been allocated gets to the home it needs to get to and ultimately delivers uh, the outcome. So whether it's the £100 uh, billion pounds that absolutely must be delivered or whether it's uh, the, the funding uh, that has been uh, made available over the last uh, few days, the real, whilst there has been celebration, the real challenge starts now in ensuring that funding finds viable, uh, deliverable homes that deliver a, 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 a result. And that's what we want to see in Scotland. We want to see a values-led, high-integrity market for natural capital. And I do emphasise that point of high integrity because it's essential that investment does produce environmental outcomes to the highest possible standard to avoid greenwashing. Not because we're scared or worried about the accusations from the world out there about greenwashing, but because the moral imperative requires us, demands us to make sure that it actually delivers its, uh, its result. And there is more that we need to develop now to ensure that we are measuring the right things and that the metrics allow us to get uh, that capital to the right uh, homes. We need to make sure that we have a fully functioning code structure for investment opportunities um, for peat and woodland, for example, um, to go into things uh, like farm soils uh, and salt marshes. Markets need to be easy to navigate for investors and we're happy to work with governments around the world including in the UK to ensure that is uh, the case. Again we know here in Scotland and I'm sure the same is true in other countries based on conversations I've had over the last uh, few days that the opportunities are numerous but if we're not much better at making them investable propositions and highlighting them and bringing them to the attention of the markets, eh, then they will not get eh, the funding they required. And I think that's where government does have a much more important role to play in terms of trying to bridge eh, the, the opportunities in, in communities with the capital eh, and funding that is available. So that was the point around high integrity. The other point that I want to make is about eh, the values eh, base. In our global capital investment plan which incidentally is trying to do that is trying to uh, be that bridge between opportunities here in Scotland uh, in communities uh, uh, and uh, uh, globally mobile uh, capital in our global capital investment plan we talk about how we seek investment not for investment's sake not that I can celebrate x billion being spent but investment that ultimately aligns with our values we are clear in our legal and moral obligations to uh, a, a just transition. And local rural communities, those very ones that have seen the impact of the, the crisis most uh, acutely, need to feel empowered and need to benefit from investment. I think there's two sides to a just transition. There is, of course, the just transition, which ensures that the benefits are shared equally. In other words, as part of the transition that we need to make, people are not left on the scrap heap. But there's also an element of the just transition, which is about how we do that in the first place. Because whether means justify ends is a major question. Whether or not we, for example, uh, depopulate vast swathes of the highlands in pursuit of our rewilding objectives is a major question. And I think just transition needs to look not only about how we ensure we don't leave people jobs on, um, uh, on the sidelines, but also how we empower communities so that they feel like they're part of the solution and not an inconvenience when it comes to nature-based uh, approaches. 
Our unwavering uh, commitment needs to be evident by our actions. Tomorrow we are launching a, a pu public consultation on the Scottish Land Rights and Responsibilities Statement, and that will ensure that our approach, originally set out in 2017, remains relevant and fit for purpose to ensure that the interests of rural communities are represented both now and in the future as we develop high integrity markets for responsible uh, investment. The, the market development for, for natural capital it, is quite obviously hugely complex. The, 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 the project uh, pipeline is nascent models for risk and return structures are only beginning to emerge and no country has yet set out a full strategic approach to developing a market for natural capital. So it's not going to be easy, which is hopefully why you're here, to work with us to find answers to this complex uh, problem. But the things that are worth doing are seldom going to be easy and are seldom going to be solved by just a few people alone. They're certainly never going to be solved by government alone, which I hope is music to your ears, uh, speaking as a government uh, minister. In Scotland, we are ready and willing to embrace the challenge and to work collaboratively precisely because it is essential and it's urgent. We have much to bring to the table beyond the wealth of our natural capital. And the key, I think, here is collaboration. We have the second largest financial centre in the UK with historic strengths in asset management and banking. But we know that our financial system needs to adapt. The financial system knows it needs to adapt if, anything, if, if yesterday is anything to go by. And we're establishing a new industry-led task force to draw up our action plan to capitalise on the opportunities of financing the global shift to net zero. It will set out the actions that we need to take collaboratively with industry to promote and establish Scotland as a country with a world-leading centre for green and ethical finance and I look forward to the recommendations of that. So as I close, you'll be delighted to, to hear as the heat starts to rise. I think I got the best uh, slot here because I think it's going to get warmer over the course of the afternoon. Um, that brings me back to where we are today. I said I was going to just make three brief points. The first is the objective. We know what it is. We know what our vision is. We know what the northern uh, light is, as it were. What the, 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 um, we know, um, secondly, uh, what the risks are. So the imperative to act. But thirdly, and hopefully that's why we're here, it's unpacking the opportunities. There are enormous uh, economic opportunities. We need to agree on what the values are. We need to agree that we will pursue excellence uh, and high integrity markets. And we need to be working collaboratively to try and find uh, the solutions. Um, it will only be done through collaboration. Collaboration across borders, collaboration across sectors, collaboration across organisation. We want to be at the forefront of that challenge. You're all here in Scotland and we're delighted to have you here in Scotland and we hope that you will take away from Scotland uh, a sense uh, of, of the, 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 the welcome you had here and the invitation to work with us to try and find uh, solutions. It is a hugely, cha a hugely um, challenging uh, issue to contend with. Um, we're serious about doing it uh, in government. We know you are because that's probably why you're here um, and look forward to working with you and seeing some of the recommendations and suggestions that emerge from the discussions over the next uh, two days. So thanks very much.